Johnston, uh, the writer, director, producer of Guard Dog. My name is Ken Parker. I'm one of the producers. I'm Lance Burton. I'm the executive producer. As you can see, I'm wearing the sports coat. That's 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 how you tell. That's how you tell. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we thought you'd like to know some things about the movie that are interesting to us. Uh, first of all, how did this movie get started? I always find that interesting to find out. Uh, how was it conceived? Uh, because I performed around the world with my magic act. I've been working with Murphy the Wonder Dog, who plays Abba the dog, since uh, the early 1980s. So we didn't have a plot. We didn't have, any, but we we had. A dog and we thought we could make a family film out of this and uh, I wrote it fairly quickly I'd say about two weeks yeah he came <laughs> back and said I have a first draft of the script and uh, yeah guard dog was born we uh, started by deciding who was gonna do what so the reason we say what we're thinking is this is my first feature film directing it so hey let's use a first time director what are you thinking when this uh, idea for guard dog came along I mean it just it was so inspired and everything just started falling into place. And, you know, did we stop to think, uh, who would be best prepared to produce the movie? So that was the second. What were you thinking? Let's, all right, we're going to use a first time director. We're going to use a first time producer. Uh, what, what were you were thinking? thinking? With, with our director of photography, this was his first feature film. Typically, he would say, hey, first time director, let's put him with a an ex very experienced DP. But we said, no, let's get one that's uh, never shot a movie before. <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> let's make the movie with no money. So well, we ended up going to our church and uh, say to a group of people there that we wanted to make this movie. And we told them about the movie. And, and people started coming forward with donations mm. to make this film. And so then we they gave us the church to shoot at uh, most of the shots that take place in the playgrounds. Those are all the playground of our church, the doubles for the school. But the church said you need to shoot it like in two weeks because we have, a, we have a, this open spot here. So, all right, so that's part of the reason we just jumped right into production. And so let's make this movie uh, with no prep time. What were we thinking? What were you thinking? There's a couple of things they say never to uh, to shoot with on a movie are animals <laughs> and kids. And so, what did we decide? Let's, Let's put make a twenty movie. nine year olds in the movie. <laughs> hey, what, what were, we were we thinking? thinking? And it turns out it's going to be the middle of August in Las Vegas. Ten hundred fifty. So, if the uh, the lead character is a actress in a <laughs> fur coat in one hundred and ten degrees. Uh, what, what were, were you we thinking? thinking? I know, it's, 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 uh, so it's that kind of... A... <laughs> uh, but we had some wonderful things. This whole thing fell together in magical ways. A lady came to me and she said, you know, I just worked with a film company in California and I did the craft services or the, the catering for them and I had a great time and I'd love to help you all out. And um, of course I said, oh yes, please. <laughs> and she just took over the entire catering department. We had to feed 60 people or so a day. and Multiple times. Multiple times a day. And she got together ladies of the church to cook stuff. And she contacted local businesses, local Subway, mm, gave us yeah. sandwiches for one of the days. And she, it was just amazing because that was really one of the most expensive things could have been sure. on shooting the movie. Feeding, feeding all, all those people. people. Absolutely. So this this just angel from heaven stepped forward, her and her husband, and came forward, and uh, she just she took over. So I think Dale and I would agree that the first thing that we do is we um, we really do pray about the the team uh, that we're building and the people. And sometimes it's really not the numbers; it is the the people, the actual people, and their commitment to what you're doing, whatever is needed uh, for any given day. And and so um, just knowing that unity of the team is so very important. You, we are building; we build a family for X number of weeks, and um, just you know knowing that caring for that family. Some of us have good days and some of us have tougher days and you want to be able to pay attention to that. And so that was just, I don't know, it's a family, it's a family affair. Um, our auditions were local in Las Vegas. We auditioned one day from 
oh, it's gosh, all day. Eight, eight in the morning or whatever it was until uh, eight at night or something like that. It, I mean, it was a long day, it was I remember. A full day. And uh, then we had callbacks the next day. And these people walked in and, and the people you see in the movie, I mean, this just wonderful things. When Oscar came in, you know, we just kind of looked at each other and went, yeah, okay, we don't have to worry about that so much anymore. Because the big worry was not to find the lead actor. I mean, a nine-year-old who could pull off this movie, this is, not, this is not an easy role. Oh, yeah. So, this is your very first movie, right? Yes, this was my first movie. Uh-huh. Did you enjoy it? Yes, it was really exciting. And what was the best part about it? It was the director, right? I uh, know. The no. best part <laughs> of it was that the painter on the painting stand and just drop new paint on me. You actually liked that? Yeah. Well, Fun. man, that means we should have shot that like three, four more times, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of fun. And you had a birthday on this. In fact, the day that we dumped the paint on you. It was my birthday. It was your birthday. Yes. How old were you that day? 10. You were 10 years old. And what did, and what did you get for a, a birthday present that day? Uh, a smaller version of Avla. Huh? Oh yeah, a little, uh, little Abba. Yeah, and new shoes. And new shoes because we ruined your shoes <laughs> by dumping paint all over them. It's uh, it's a great cast. We really had a great time working with everybody. Trina walked in. Uh, she plays Miss Miss McGillicuddy and nailed it. I mean, and it, the 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 thing that got her the part was <laughs> she was doing the line and her eyes started twitching. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it was so hilarious. <laughs> then, all right, she's the one. It was great. The hardest part of playing Miss McGillicuddy was the continual eye twitch. <laughs> that <laughs> happened to linger sometimes after filming. <laughs> I, I wasn't there at the auditions. I wasn't, I wasn't there for that process. I, I met the actors on set when, when, we, when we started filming, yeah. particularly the, 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 the scene in the school lunchroom. Right. But I was really uh, struck by how good uh, everyone was. Everybody, everybody was always just super amazing. Everyone was so nice and sweet and helpful. And we, everybody got along and just seeing the the hard work that everyone brought to it. There was no, never was anybody slacking. Everybody was always working hard and, and doing their best. And it was a lot of great memories. Yeah, we had a blast. Um, <laughs> actually, there was really funny. It was my, actually my last shoot day. So um, there's a part in the film where I come in and check out the house and it has, you know, roaches in it. And so I'm looking through the kitchen and, you know, he says action. And I'm thinking it's gonna be like no roach. So I just have to, you know, as an actor, just fake seeing a roach and being kind of disgusted by it, or, you know, at the most, like a little, you know, play thing. And so I look in the bowl and it moved and there actually was a Madagascar hissy cockroach in the bowl and I freaked out. <laughs> oh, oh, God! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was hilarious and that was a good send off on my last shoot day. <laughs> I just had a blast. It was so fun working with all these people and over time getting to know them, getting closer and closer. Now I get it, you know, whenever they're doing the Academy Awards and they're all talking about, oh, we're a family. We really are, it's totally awesome. Another typical thing you would want to do when you are starting to shoot a movie is uh, have all your locations secured before you start shooting. Wouldn't that be a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> what were we thinking? What were we thinking? Did we have anything lined up for the courtroom to begin with? Well, the, no. <laughs> we kept on, uh, we had some leads for some, uh, some other courtrooms, you know, but nothing had come through and we kept on saying, well, it's gonna happen. Everything in this movie has fallen into place. Of course, this will fall into place. Lucky lands. Okay, so here's the story. So, so I had just shot my first feature film, uh, Billy Toppet, Master Magician, which I directed, and I cast Rory as the bad guy in my movie. And Rory introduced me to Will and Chris, who played the two goons, his, his muscle in the movie. Well, Will and Chris are both police officers in real life, and, uh, and uh, Will 
uh, had a connection with the uh, courtroom. So we used the courtroom in Billy Toppett to sentence Rory to jail at the end of the movie. And, uh, and, and through Will, we were able to get the courtroom. And so we shot there that day and, and everything was great. And we were very respectful of the courtroom. And, and I guess they had a good you know, taste in their mouth from, from uh, Billy Toppett. So when, when you were looking for a courtroom, we called them back up and said, hey, can we come back down? And they said, yeah, sure. But it was the Lance Burton name that opened it, that door. It, it was. Right? It was, uh, suddenly it was like the doors. Did you ever, did you ever hear the story when we were shooting Billy Toppett in the courtroom with the craft services? No. <laughs> okay, so, so, so we go in to shoot that day and we had a little table set up. We didn't have a lot, but we had some little chips and some you know, dip and right. some vegetables and some drinks and stuff. So we had them like sitting out, out in the hallway, out, Inside the courtroom, well, uh, where people are in and out, setting up, and people are having little snacks. Well, people were also in the building because there were other courtrooms that, right. that were having cases. So there were people in there that were <laughs> that were on trial. That would come and grab one of these oh, chips. Like, oh, is this a nice? Is this a nice facility? They have food out here for. Before so I go were, to jail, I can have a little bit of and queso. They, exactly, they were eating snacks. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can tell, especially if you if right now you're watching me and you're like, wow, he's pretty buff and tall and in shape. Uh, but I was picked on quite a bit as a child. It has something to do maybe with the hair. I don't know. Uh, but so when a script comes along about the importance of being kind and treating everybody with respect and love and not bullying and teasing people, um, it really hits home and it brings up a lot of emotions and feelings for people, you know, that have gone through that. So I think if people can see this movie with their children and the kids and the parents can learn just a little bit about how to make someone else's life a little bit easier in school and it's, it's so worth it. You know, with this film that, you know, it tells that people, you know, no matter how they start off, you know, people can, through love and, you know, through the goodness of other people can change and they can um, be better people in the end. And so I just think that's a really important um, story to tell and to give people hope for that as well. It was a labor of love for everybody involved. I it think. really was. I mean, I think, you know, once you started sharing kind of the vision behind uh, the story and what the film is and could be, um, people just came out of the woodwork and said, yes, I want to be a part of that. The community was, was so tight-knit and, you know, we just loved hanging out with each other. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was a very special project and uh, we hope that what we put all into it, all the, all the love that, that went into it, all the caring that went into it, all the heart that went into it. We hope uh, that it comes across uh, the screen and that you can feel that as you watch uh, the movie Guard Dog. All right, so, so to wrap up, first time feature director. First time producer, first time production manager, mm -hmm. first time prop person, first time uh, first AD, um, first time makeup people, um, most of the cast, first movie, first time actors, a lot of them. Yeah, it was a real cockroach. It was a real cockroach. But the dog wasn't a real dog. But the dog wasn't real. What are you thinking? He's real to me. What was I thinking?